Hey everybody, welcome to the Glasses Push. My name's Chuck, and today we're talking about Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. Um, now, while a lot of the things I'll be talking about are just regarding the book, uh, I do want to make special note of the audiobook, which is how I consumed it, uh, just because there are some very interesting decisions that were made in the audiobook that I would like to uh, discuss for anybody inclined to partake in one format over another. So, I am unfamiliar with George Saunders, however, the AV Club highly recommended this book. Uh, they say that George Saunders is a well-known columnist, uh, has written a lot of short uh, compilation type novellas, but this is his uh, first foray into a long-form fictional novel. As far as I know, I may be wrong. Uh, there's always Google. I probably should have Googled this. I'm not going to stop recording and then Google it. It's not going to happen. Who should read this? Why should you care? The specific hook for me was when the AV Club mentioned how the book tackles the theme of mortality, but specifically... What is the point in living when it all ends? That's a really weighty theme, uh, very ambitious, and uh, that really is right up my alley. It sounded like it would have a very fulfilling conclusion, so I was hooked. So if you're interested in big themes like that, definitely check it out. A couple other reasons is it is a blend of Fiction and history, uh, the titular Lincoln is both the alive Abraham Lincoln and his deceased son, Willie. There's a lot of passages taken from old books recounting either descriptions of Lincoln, descriptions of parties, or kind of the political air. I would say, uh, during those times. So that fine line that is established between history and fiction is, is very enthralling and creates a certain sense of, of heft to the fiction as it ties in with the history. So another great reason for you to care and check it out. And then specifically for the audiobook version, uh, it is stacked with uh, celebrities. I believe the official count for the number of voices in the audiobook is 166. Essentially, every single character is voiced by a unique person with a few exceptions with uh, some noted celebrity chameleons like uh, Bill Hader. So these are all great reasons to check it out. What did I think? Lincoln and the Bardo is an exceptionally creative work. The varied structure of the book is absolutely a huge hook. You have numerous character perspectives from the traditional fictional prose, as well as peppered in the aforementioned chapters where all it is is various excerpts from historical works or biographies of Lincoln or journals. So that alone creates uh, quite a bit of variety. My no-spoilers policy uh, presents a little bit of a struggle here, as the novel is quite short, and to give even one or two plot details away may spoil a lot of the fun. What I'm comfortable telling you is that the book focuses on the circumstances surrounding... Willie Lincoln's death and his time 
in the afterlife at a cemetery with periodic visits from his father. The beginning of the book starts with an account of several different people's deaths. At first, you're not sure what at all they have to do with the story, and one of the deaths in particular and that character, it's a little graphic and sexual, which is uh, kind of the continuing levity throughout the book. You're not sure how that connects. And then the next chapter is almost entirely focused on a huge party that is held at the Lincoln residence while Willie Lincoln is actively dying in a bedroom upstairs. And there is an extravagant amount of detail put into recounting the night's events. Very little to do with our titular Lincoln boy. So immediately going into this book, it's a little confusing, but it's intentional. I will say that all of the details do end up coming together, uh, sometimes in very overt ways, and sometimes it's more to establish a, a real sense of purpose and weight uh, to this fictional tale. As I mentioned, the end goal is focusing on mortality, what you do with your time on Earth heavy stuff, and so a lot of these mundane accounts, or seemingly mundane accounts, all factor into the very powerful final sections. Saunders has definitely earned his respect and renown as a columnist and a writer. The book has so many different writing styles. It often calls the the more antiquated, poetic, uh, you know, romantic writing styles, or or even even perhaps the maybe Dickensian in a sense. Other times, it is nearly shockingly crude in its vulgarity or sexuality. And then there's the heavy stuff where Saunders really shines when he starts very directly opining about the nature of being. It is so beautiful and so direct. It almost seems like the book was retrofitted around perhaps an essay he wrote about the nature of existence and the purpose of carrying through with life, no matter how much you may be haunted by your own mortality. Top-notch writing. The confusion is purposeful, and there is no time where a confusing passage happens that is not immediately followed up by some semblance of reason. Now on the audiobook, I mentioned the cast, uh, which they all did a fantastic job reading their lines. Uh, additionally, there are musical interludes done in an old Southern style, and it was actually done by uh, Jeff Tweedy and his son. That's kind of a hipster's dream right there. Uh, the music really fits the tone and the period of the novel. However, the one confusing thing about the book is that there is a narrator, but the narrator is 
intermittently used for the passages that are not being spoken by a character. Additionally, some voices are more similar than others, so occasionally then you have to go back, understand the context, which, which really is one of the shortfalls of audiobooks in general, is that sometimes you do lose that context. But more often than not, the voices are incredibly unique, and without the eventual narrative assignment of who the character is, you often know just from the voice, which I believe is one of the great benefits of an audiobook. Overall, any detractors of the audiobook are far outweighed uh, by the pros of it. It is exceptionally edited and performed. Now, as a whole, for me, the ending of the book has to deliver. This stands for all books. I think the last couple chapters can make or break any book. I believe it's the penultimate chapter where the musings about death really come out in full force. A lot of characters are involved in the finale, and it's pretty emotional. The last chapter doesn't quite have the note of finality that the preceding chapter did, and offers the one troublesome bit of blending history and fiction. The troublesome piece is that the book makes an implication that a ghost, a fictional character from the story, had influenced Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. Which, while I understand how the combination of the spiritual and the physical realm, that interaction is a big part of the novel, at that point, history stops serving the fiction, and the fiction makes, honestly, its only clumsy attempt to shape the history. Most of the time, they really go hand in hand and are, are beautifully met. So, what would I rate it? About halfway through the book, I was feeling like I had gotten bamboozled by the AV Club, that the book would not be able to deliver on all of these uh, grand superlatives that were placed on it uh, by said club of audio and visual things, the AV Club. However, the ending really proved me wrong, and throughout the story, I was very entertained, not just by the structure, uh, but the very diverse blend of characters, perspectives, and writing styles. When you go into a book with higher hopes, though, you expect perhaps to be wowed from beginning to end. There were some lulls, but with an amazing payoff in the case of this one. And the payoff really made up for a lot of the lulls and explained why they existed. It made me think a lot after the fact and still stays with me, even though I completed it about two weeks ago. All of that said, my gut is telling me 89, where it is at the upper end of above average and almost excellent. And it's mostly discounted due to the amazing penultimate chapter being slightly undermined by the actual final chapter as well as a couple of the meandering periods in between. That said, though, uh, incredibly unique novel. Highly enjoyed it, and uh, definitely recommend it. So when and where should you read it? Uh, 
you know, really as soon as you have a book hole, it's a relatively short uh, book uh, from the audiobook side of things. I believe it's about 10 hours. And, uh, you know, you should probably read it in a sunny cemetery or a park. Some place that is peaceful but could also be a little creepy. Uh, and uh, to reflect the uh, highly southern influence of the book, with a lot of the accents and whatnot, uh, you probably need some sweet tea and uh, some insulin to, uh, to counteract the sweet tea. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have you listened to this or read it? Uh, what did you think? Have you done both? I know the glasses push thing is a little cheesy and sometimes is kind of like driving the whole point home a little too much or whatever, but I strongly feel like I will regret it for the rest of my life. Uh, if I do not push these glasses, it will haunt me on my deathbed. Uh, so I'm, I'm pushing these. This life was worth living.